Hello, welcome to Susie Makes. I've decided to start a new category within this craft channel. Normally I'm showing you how to do a craft, normally from the basic level as well. But do you know something? I've got so many finished objects that um, I have completed using the skills uh, mostly found on the uh, Susie Mates Craft channel that I thought I would sh have a ta-da like ta-da uh, channel to show you my finished objects so I've made myself nice and cozy for my first ta-da video and um, and now I shall introduce I've got my cup of coffee uh, it's actually got quite a nice granny square mug hug around it which I will show you how to do at some point and um, I'm going to now show you my uh, I'm very proud, of, stupidly proud of this but here it is ta-da! let's just move that out of the way and it is it's not the best of cameras for showing large projects so I'm just going to show you that uh, it is a Granny Squares project bag inspired by, just see if I can get the light slightly better there, it's not got quite so much shine on it, inspired by, I belong to a group on Facebook and um, Instagram um, called, let me get this right now, uh, I think it's called the Craftanoon's Bag Along, as in B A G A L O N G, Bag Along, um, where um, a la lovely lady called Catherine Senior, she runs the group. She also has a wonderful blog um, called Craftanoon Treats, and she has a wonderful crochet podcast on YouTube which I believe is also called Craftanoon Treats. Now she started off the craze for crochet bags in my opinion anyway because um, what she did was she made, um, I think this was her first one anyway, it's certainly the first one I saw, she made a granny square bag but it was like large uh, granny squares for each uh, side panel and the bottom so you made five large granny squares and the idea was that this was uh, like your project bag for uh, taking out and about with you um, or for keeping some of your stashing if you're working on a um, say a blanket or something uh, large then you know it was big enough to keep your all your yarn in it that you were likely to need to carry around with you, your crochet hooks, and it was um they're beautiful fully lined bags um and people liked it so much that Catherine started a bag along Facebook group um that people could join to show off their crocheted bags, and obviously many of us made a um trying to think what the name of it actually was um, uh, well many of us made one of these large granny square bags for our projects or our uh, stashes and I became a fan of um, Dan and Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears podcast which is a um, knitting and history podcast there there's some fun bits in there as well but mostly it's knitting I think uh, they both have a passion for knitting but Dan uh, particularly seems to have a passion for history and uh, it's mostly about knitting and history absolutely brilliant podcast um, it is feature film length so you do need to sit if you're going to sit down and find the bakery bears on YouTube you need to make sure you've got the time to watch a film basically um, and I believe their 55th podcast has just been released and I've watched every single one of them they're absolutely brilliant um, but um, on the bakery bears podcast I 
I digressed a bit there, didn't I? Um, Kay is very, very fond of showing her project bags, which she initially started making herself. And um, some people sent her some as little gifts and things. And she loved her uh, fabric project bags for all her little projects, which um, they usually knit um, socks, uh, hats, uh, shawlettes and shawls. Um, so they have a project bag for each separate project that they cast on. Now I'm one of these people that tends to cast on maybe at the most two things, but then have to finish one of them before I'll cast on the next one. Um, but uh, I, I must admit I am coming round to thinking, well if there's many things I want to cast on, I just will and put each one is in a separate project bag and work on each one as, as takes my fancy. Why not? Anyway, I thought what about crochet in a project bag? Sometimes I like to, when I go out so for, for my birthday, um, I like to go and visit Beachy Head um, in Eastbourne. Um, I absolutely love sitting on top of Beachy Head. I know it has a sad history, a sad past, um, but it is one of the most stunningly beautiful places in my mind um, in this country. And I haven't seen many stunningly beautiful places, I admit, but to me, the uh, Beachy Head comes at the top. Um, I'm just going to take a sip of my coffee. My throat's a bit dry. Try and avoid coughing. Um, and usually on my birthday we we will go to Beachy Head. Now this year we went there, but a sea mist had come in. So where it was a scorching hot day, where and this sea mist had come in all over Beachy Head. It was um, quite spectacular to watch. Actually, you we could have sat on Beachy Head, but. <laughs> wouldn't have been able to see my hand in front of my face the mist was that thick and it was freezing cold so you know I said well we don't want to all sit on on top of beachy head freezing on a lovely day like this so we went down into Eastbourne and sat on the beach where it was scorching hot and you could just turn to your right and uh, look at beachy head and it was completely shrouded in this mist it was absolutely amazing but anyway very often on my my little trips out like that as my daughter now lives in um, Eastbourne I want to take a bit of uh, knitting or crochet with me so I thought I would make my own crocheted project bag which is a miniature version of the granny square uh, bag that Catherine Senior first introduced to us um, on her her blog and on the Facebook group so I had a box full of miniature granny squares that I have been making over quite a period of time and just sometimes when I don't fancy working on anything big when the fancy takes me I'll make a few half a dozen or so so I had um, a box which had loads of these granny squares in and uh, so I did five panels of nine of these granny squares and I joined them all with a UK double crochet just gonna show you the bottom and once they were all joined I'm gonna take out all the yarn inside now um, was the whole point of this bag was I wanted to be able to take a bag with some small, smaller wound off balls of yarn um, take those hooks out so that so I could go out with a small project bag and a variety of colours of yarn you imagine how big the bag would need to be if I took all this yarn with me to um, in one big bag but winding off a few, then you imagine how many little granny squares I can get out of that. Even four round granny squares. So, once I had joined the panels together, um, once I had put the granny squares together rather, I decided to line it. Now when I line something, I know what appears to be the normal way is to make an inner bag out of fabric 
to go inside and then sew round the edge. Well, for me, it goes wrong too many times, so I found a simpler way of lining my bags. And I might turn it inside out to show you, actually. So what I did was I laid my five panels that I had um, joined together flat on top of a piece of fabric, which was this fabric, on the wrong side, I, I, on the wrong side of the fabric, and I drew around it. So you can see, and I drew around it so you had the square bit in the middle and a panel sticking out um, on all four sides. Now, this does mean that this tend doesn't tend to get joined at these seams, but I'm not too bothered about that because that um, it's actually uh, handy to, for me to keep that free for when I actually join the side seams up of the granny panels. So I then put them wrong sides together and I go round and sew all the way around hand sewn all the way around. Let's put it back in the right way. Now I tend not to be overly fond of my hand sewing on these sort of projects. I tend to be a bit neater if I'm making a quilt. Yes, I, I do hand sew quilts. <laughs> just a preference, just personal preference. Um, I tend to be a little bit scared of machinery so I tend to hand make everything. So, and there I had my lined uh, granny square project bag so because I'm not overly fond of my stitching on the uh, top of the lining I had some uh, grey lace in my crafty stash which I think I got something like 10 yards of it on eBay for only 90p or 99p and it was free postage as well and uh, and the grey isn't quite the same as the grey I've used to join the granny squares and to edge it all, um, but close enough and it does cover up to a certain extent my dubious stitching on the um, lining. So, um, and then when it came to doing the handles, now I did two rounds of UK double crochet Actually, no, I started with one round, I think. One round of UK double crochet, I believe it was. Initially, or was it two? Oh, there are two rounds there. I'm just trying to think which which way round I did it. Anyway, I um, did two... I think I did one round, and then what I did, I started off the handles. So when I got to uh, this side join here when I got above that I then cast uh, then um, cast on I'm a knitter as well you can you tell <laughs> I then chained I think it was could have a, a count here actually one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 it must have been 35. I chained 35 stitches across to the other corner join. Then I did, let's make sure I've got this right, um, then I got some garden twine which has that slightly dark colour you can see in there. Some green uh, garden twine and I double crocheted a row back over the handle and was it just yep yeah, that was it and then underneath to neaten that up underneath the handle I just did a UK slip stitch all the way along the underneath of it and uh, which made that look much neater so then I carry on uh, with the double crochet from here to here then I did the, uh, the other handle in exactly the same way on this side. Now, 
um, that means what about the second double crochet row underneath the handle? Well, I continued with the double crochet up to this point, but underneath the handles I had to break yarn and just go across on the double crochet either side. So it was all nice and even. So you've got to do two double crochet rows on top of the bag. You've got a couple of pretty little handles. And then the flowers. Now the flowers and the leaves. The flowers I've made so many of I can't remember where the original pattern came from. It was a free pattern I believe on um on the internet. But I've tend to make you know you make something for so many years and you just keep going over and over and over. Um I can't remember. It might be Lucy of Attic 24. It might be her small flowers. The leaves were definitely Lucy of Attic 24. Um, so I did two flowers for each um, corner of the bag and two leaves for each corner of the bag and attached those at the base of each handle. And then I filled it with all my scrummy yarn lots and lots of little balls of yarn to take with me that I can, I mean I filled this up perhaps slightly more than I would if I was going out because I need a bit of room to put my completed granny squares in I know. So there you have it. Oh, run away yarn. There you have a pretty crocheted project bag so when I go when I go out I'll probably take some of those out because there are some duplicates in there and I would then be able to sit maybe on the beach crocheting little granny squares to my heart or even slightly bigger ones to my heart's content and putting them in my little crochet project bag so I hope it's been fun, me sitting here showing off my finished projects and talking about a little about how I made them. Once I figure out how, I will put links to the people I've mentioned, like Craftanoon Treats and Attic24, in the notes. Um, if I can't figure out how to do it, my daughter's visiting me next week, which is week commencing the 15th of August 2016 and she'll show me, show me how. So if they're not there when you look today, come back in a few days time, they'll probably be there. Um, but in the meantime, if you can't wait, look, uh, just do an internet search for Crafting and Treats and Attic24 and you'll probably find uh, a whole lot more besides what I'm talking about on these lovely blogs and Facebook pages and on Instagram. So thanks for joining me and I hope to welcome you back to another Tadar moment very soon. Bye for now.